Welcome to the American Institute of Steel Construction's 2024 Forge Prize Jury. The Forge Prize since 2018 has been a really unique opportunity for architects to experiment with conceptual design without limit to scope or complexity. So the competition celebrates emerging architects this year, also architecture faculty, and even um, graduate level student, architecture students who create visionary designs that embrace uh, steel innovation. The jurors have narrowed it down to, um, to three finalists who we have here and they've each won $5,000 and have spent the last six weeks working with steel fabricators to refine their designs. So they're presenting those refined designs today and the jurors will deliberate off screen and then return to um, announce the grand prize worth $10,000. So it's really exciting. The AISC co-host you see here are Christina Herber, the Senior Director of Education, and I am Jean Homer, the Senior Architect um, in, in University Relations. We welcome three jurors. I think um, we'll start with uh, Samantha Flores, is the Vice President and Director of the Innovation and Research Team at Corgan. Reed Kroloff is the Rowe Family College of Architecture Endowed Chair and the Dean of the Illinois Institute of Technology College of Architecture. And Paul Makovsky is the Editor-in-Chief of Architect, which is the Journal of the American Institute of Architects. We also thank the three member fabricators for mentoring, sharing their expertise with our finalists. We have um, Tony Dybald with Hillsdale Fabricators, which is located in St. Louis, Michael B. Moore and Thomas Kotniak of Thompson Metal Fab in uh, Vancouver, Washington, and um, John Pisha of Garby Ironworks in Aurora, Illinois. And um, these are our finalists, but I'm gonna go ahead and just introduce them right before uh, they speak. And I think we can go ahead and start with our first presentation. So Emily, would you like to share your screen? Okay, thank you so much. Um, so I am going, uh, yes? Emily, I, wait, I, I'll just do a quick oh, introduction sorry. of you first. Gotcha. No, that's okay. Yes, um, <laughs> so our first presentation you can see is Mile Zero, and it's a collaboration between Emily Baker of University of Arkansas and Princeton University's Isabel de, de la Vieda, and Vincent Edwards, Edmund Harris of the University of Arkansas, West Virginia University's Eduardo Sosa, and Fayetteville, Arkansas based artist Riley Dickens Hoffman. And they partnered with Hillsdale Fabricators, the, the chief, chief structural engineer, Tony Diebold. Okay, Emily, please take it away. Okay, thank you so much. We're thrilled to be here to share the project, which is called Mile Zero, a structural steel pavilion for the Greenway. And, um, let's, sorry, um, get something out of my, the way of my screen here. Um, and the project is um, a kind of uh, space frame canopy that is supposed to be a public, um, amenity and marker for the Razorback Greenway, which is a 40 plus mile uh, multi-use trail system that has a lot of spurs. It's well loved and really well used and a wonderful resource for our area. And the beginning of that trail, the, the zero mile of that trail is at this park, this kind of recreational area called Mount Kessler that includes a lot of mountain bike trails and it has this little nondescript roundabout that you see in the picture to the right that is the beginning, the mile zero of this long uh, trail experience. And the only thing marking it right now is this um, kind of small bollard that lets people know that they're starting at the zero mile. So we wanted to um, also uh, at the request of some uh, regional and city entities that were interested in celebrating this moment of the beginning of the trail system, uh, proposed this um, piece, which is kind of a public art meets pavilion 
uh, piece that um, includes uh, weathering steel as the main material and uh, a, a canopy that's made out of the spin valence system that I will describe momentarily um, that allows for uh, a, this play of light and shadow and pattern to happen on the ground below it. So you're kind of moving in this circular pattern around, uh, around the central point. So it provides a place for people to meet up for, um, for people to kind of get information, maps, sit, uh, meet each other, and maybe even take photos after a 40 mile ride. Um, and so spin valence is a system that I developed um, when I was in grad school that is a kirigami based space frame system. So kirigami like origami, except including cutting. So cutting and folding uh, of sheet materials. Um, so um, the system works by uh, creating a pattern of units that is cut into the surface of a, sh a sheet materials uh, or sheet steel. And it then folded, each unit folds up out and spins up out of the sheet and then reconnects to its neighboring units uh, to create structural depth. So in this photo, there's a 12 gauge sheet of steel that was about you know an eighth of an inch thick and effectively it gets turned into something that's two inches thick and has quite a rigid structural um, spanning capability. And you can see also below the way that it um, kind of transforms light as it moves through as well. So from one sheet of material, you end up with two layers that are interconnected um, with, uh, with triangulating legs. So very similar to a more traditional space frame, but the uh, way that it works can be a lot more rapid. Um, so here's, here's, you know, a, a plasma cutter with a sheet that's been cut, and then that would end up being um, unfolded into um, some, some pieces like these. So I've made some, some larger scale prototypes like this um, and, and been able to observe kind of the way that they deal with light and shadow as it moves throughout the day. I've also done some experimentation with like, um, getting the system to curve. Uh, but the this proposal would be by far the largest and, and big public uh, um, application of spin valence that it has a slight cone shape to it. So it, it moves away from the flat uh, application a little bit. It's a horizontal application. And most of the things that I've ever tested have been generally kind of vertical, uh, though it, it, it has that capacity to span. And um, it also kind of scales from smaller units in the center uh, to larger units on the outside. So on the left, you kind of see the base tiling pattern that we started from. And then on the right, you see the way that that spin valence system then is deployed. And uh, that's a kind of aerial view. And then this is a representation of it from the air. Um, so um, because of the scale shift of smaller triangular units on the uh, inner ring and larger ones on the outside, we get a, a little bit of a shift in depth as it comes out away and away from the center, um, the, the ring of space frame comes in and bears on this kind of built up beam that becomes like a compression ring. Um, and then that, that ring bears on these kind of plate-like columns that ring around the, um, the central space and also kind of have an interesting visual effect of uh, sometimes transparency and sometimes become a bit opaque. Um, through talking with uh, Tony Diebold and I was able to visit their shop in St. Louis, um, we decided to divide up the canopy into 20 kind of slices like this. And the end of each slice is just at around eight feet. So it would fit on a large scale plasma cutter and be able to cut out of a single sheet and then deployed into its a structural form and kind of be shipped to the um, site like this and then assembled on site. Great, thank you, Emily. Um, so now we'll show the preliminary structural evaluation of the system. 
going from a study of individual units to how the whole system is intended to behave. Um, so first, um, the other slide, please. So first to connect to the, to the fabrication aspect that we were just mentioning now, you can see here at the top left, the fabrication of a section of the canopy with a paper model. And uh, where we first test holding it only from one end, and we can see it already shows higher stiffness compared to a flat sheet. So here is also a model like this and how a flat sheet would be. Um, and then uh, you can see on the bottom left, three of these sections connected, uh, just as we were mentioning, connecting up these uh, sections to make the whole surface. But let's take a step back and zoom into the behavior of the individual units as shown on the right. Uh, so in a recent scientific publication, we show that we can reliably fabricate the system using steel. We show that the forces uh, needed to deploy the system remain very low, so around 30 to 80 pounds. And this is still something we can do with our own hands. So also uh, in the publication, we tested the system under compression and found it can take up to a thousand pounds or about 1400 times its own weight. And that is only for a unit about this size. So uh, I'm showing you here. And uh, I'm sure we can develop the system further uh, and get even better results than that. So uh, here we show the uh, also um, the, the section zooming out, looking at the section of the canopy, we see that the system can behave almost like the space frame we already know, with mostly axial force flow. And the system can then transfer the forces down to the support ring, which in turn transfer loads to the series of columns that we have on the design. And then zooming out even more, we see uh, the system is not only distributing forces down to the support structure through truss action, but when it is fully connected to the final form, it also self-stabilizes with the tension rings that you can see in blue. And of course, this is a, only a preliminary study and this concept, if it, this concept is successful, we would uh, love to uh, dive deeper and have a more detailed perspective of the structural solution. But for now, we leave you with this concept in mind and um, thank you. Thank you, Emily and Isabel. Did um, the jurors have some really quick comments before we move on to the next presentation? I just have one quick question. How do they, how does the, uh, uh, the, the sun shade connect to the compression ring in the center? Is it just it's, a bolted connection or welded connection or? Well, when we discussed it with Tony, we talked about well, site welding um, because of, you know, but I think that's a, you know, those are things that we would probably have to iterate, iterate with our fabricator and, and make sure they they work well yeah okay that was my yes. question yeah um i have a question how wide is the inner ring mm, the the outer diameter is 60 feet the inner okay. ring is um i don't have the exact dimension off the top of my head it's it's 22 or something like that okay i guess you know you're you're having, this, you're having this pavilion, uh, which is going to provide shading and, you know, hopefully if it's raining, um, how much of the pavilion is, let's say, practical? <laughs> it's not meant for uh, really rain cover the way it's designed right now. It doesn't have a, a surface on top of it. Right. Um, yeah, it's meant but, to be but, kind of an outdoor sculptural piece. Yeah, but you do have people sitting. Right. Getting, sure. And yeah. Sure. And you did say that bollard is the only thing there. So, mm -hmm. you know, it would be it would be nice to make it a, maybe a little more practical is is something that I would think. I mean, the so, the, the idea is beautiful. Kirigami and the technique is beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is really a very artistic component to it. Uh, but when you go through that whole. um all that time and effort, it might be interesting to see, to, to make it a little practical. Yeah. Thank you. Some, something we also discussed was having some uh, panels at the top that would be transparent. So you can't see it from down up, but you could right. uh, have the that part as well. Yeah. One last, yeah. One last yeah. thing. Sorry, one last thing. And then, uh, did you have any break in the testing, right? Did you have any breakage? 
No, we didn't have any sudden uh, breakage and we tested five of each type of unit, polygonal unit from triangles to hexagons. Okay, okay good. Okay, thanks. I was just going to suggest that you not put a flat plastic transparent surface over the top because it sort of goes against the whole idea of the metal competition, right? So what might be interesting is to see if there's a way that these things can get infinitely smaller and stack, right? Uh, or there, there's a variable opening. I would worry less about water. Uh, I think that's a lost cause, but I think mm -hmm. I might uh, think about shading right now. It's completely uh, uh, perfect circle around there. Maybe it, it isn't, you know, maybe it's elliptical or maybe it's mm -hmm. something else so that it, it actually works with the sun to create more effective shading in addition to the density, right? Um, but it's very beautiful. Uh, these are all, these are all coulda, woulda comics. <laughs> you, you know, you have a really beautiful, what I particularly like about it is the, the dead simplicity of the idea and, and your follow through on that. Thank you. Um, Samantha, I, did you have any quick comments? Yeah, I was just going to say I agree with Reed on everything he just said, not putting the plastic on, love the simplicity, it's a beautiful design. And I also had the same question, Reed. Um, I was curious if you did um, even study what an elliptical design might give you and how difficult it would be because you wouldn't have the same repeatable um, uh <laughs> section so i was just curious if you tried that at all yeah we've looked actually this this design um has went through several iterations ahead of this competition and at one point it was very not not standard and um isabel and i just we for fabricatability we decided to go with something a little bit simpler this this time because we really do want to make this happen for real here and so um I, but I, I, I do like the, I think pulling it into an ellipse is not so out of the, you know, realm of possibility. And Isabel and I have discussed it and she thinks structurally based on what she's seen preliminarily that it could work. So, yeah. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So we're going to have our next uh, presenter. Um, Juan, do you want to go ahead and share your screen and I'll introduce you while you're doing that? Um, Juan Jose Castellon, um, his uh, proposal, Building Ecologies Installation, is a collaboration um, on Rice's School of Architecture, the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering, and the Shepherd School of Music uh, with the support of the Carbon Hub Initiative. And um, he partnered with Thompson Metal Fab, so Vice President of Business Development, Michael Moore, and Vice President of Project Management, Thomas Kutnyak. So Juan, whenever you're ready. Great, thank you, Jen. Uh, Can well, you share your screen? Yes, let me. Okay. Uh, share screen. And... All right, whenever you're ready. Okay, thank you. Well, first of all, uh, I would like to thank the, the jury and the American Institute of Steel Construction for selecting this project as a finalist for the first prize. It's already a great, great honor and an amazing opportunity for us. Um, and I would like to start uh, with a bit of, a, of the context uh, in some traditionally or historically steel construction has always been at the forefront of building innovation. Uh, if we take reference like uh, back Mr. Fuller or Conrad Waxman or Alexander or Graham Bell, uh, they all imagine and materialize beautiful and innovative structures. But what uh, made this project extremely uh, in impactful in the kind of context was the, 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 that they were proposing also a ecological and sustainable building models for, for our planet. So inspired by this tradition, building ecologies is conceived as a modular and collective building infrastructure that provides shading and shelter while collecting, cleaning, and harvesting rainwater for irrigation purposes, as well as heating and cooling strategies for urban rooftops and public spaces. 
questions of lightness, prefabrication, modularity, transport, assembly and reuse, converging this proposed uh, kit of parts. Um, and there is an additional layer that is more cultural. It kind of bridges my, my own culture. In, in I'm from Spain, from Barcelona. And we have a strong tradition in metal, especially textiles, metal, and also ceramics. Uh, and, and this project was developed also in collaboration with manufacturing companies in, in, in Spain and, and in Houston, in Texas. So the, the canopy, the, the, I mean, this kit of parts, the canopy, which is the most, uh, let's say, uh, complex uh, structure uh, was conceived as a space trash and it was developed uh, here. You can see one of the mockups that was developed uh, in, in Barcelona, in my, my hometown. Um, and then the faceted wa waterproof membrane uh, that collects and cleans the water the, was developed also there, but also connects with an ongoing technology and ongoing project and research developed by our civil and environmental engineering department at RICE and led by Dr. Chilin Lee, that basically cleans all the impurities of, of rainwater, of rainwater, the raindrops that come from the atmosphere, uh, allowing the water when streaming through the expansive membrane to be collected with already a kind of level of treatment. Um, and then once collected, the rainwater is channeled through a component-based ceramic column that was also developed in collaboration with uh, ceramic manufacturers in Barcelona and connects also with the tradition of uh, vernacular architecture that, I mean, in former times, these pipes were not PVC or plastic, but actually were ceramic. And we were to bring back this kind of quality in the building components. Uh, so these elements, these ceramic pieces work both as a structural element, but also as a water pipe. And these ceramic pipes were developed uh, again with, with traditional techniques, uh, but also uh, in combination with, with more uh, digital technologies like robotic fabrication to, to generate these kind of connections. So the resulting prototype was built and exhibited as an installation at Post Houston, and it was open to the public from October 2022 to April 2023. Um, so here you can see some images of the installation, which was also a very interesting experience because uh, I, I brought some, some colleagues from Barcelona and then some crew from Texas, and they were working together in the construction of the prototype, which was a really exciting moment. Uh, and then in the way that the resulting prototype uh, came together uh, was also a, a nice kind of combination of, of a pre-existing condition on a new nature that was emerging out of this uh this kind of uh material and structural logic since the project i'm i'm now showing a small video that shows a bit the final result and you will you will listen a small uh, sound uh, in the background because since the, the 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 prototype was built in an interior as an exterior installation uh, i was collaborating with the composer and professor at the shepherd school of music uh, at rice kurt stallman to generate a soundscape that simulates and evokes the sound of raindrops and water streaming. But of course, what we would like is to have this in an exterior experience. Uh, I think there is a part that is experiential. So actually bringing another layer of sophistication in the structure is not only functional, but aesthetically pleasant. And, and also kind of uh, in terms of the perception, uh, something that I really enjoyed, how, how people was interacting uh, with the piece, basically touching the, the, the materials and, and experiencing this kind of uh, atmosphere. So boosted by this generous award, we, we are now adapting the concept to an outdoor full implementation, which was the whole purpose of the project. And, and the proposed site is, is in Rice University, is the Holistic Garden, which is a urban farming and teaching outdoor space on campus that now demands more uh, let's say more opportunities to collect and, and clean water to use it for irrigation purposes, but actually also spaces for outdoor teaching and for a kind of a collective uh, events. So together with Thompson and Metal, Metal Fab, with Thomas, but also with Arup Engineering, we have analyzed and simplified and refined, refined this modular system to respond to, for example, wind loads and other functional requirements. We have run a set of several simulations, double checking the kind of feasibility of the project. And also the goal would be 
to, to achieve a system that is economic and easy to manufacture, transport and assemble, and also adapt to different contexts and conditions. So there is a part of the, of the project that involves a kind of possibility to adapt this kind of modular system into uh, uh, more expressive forms. So, uh, and we are using technology for a precise design and manufacturing of all the building components. Together with Thomas and, and, and John, we have been going through the project, trying to simplify it, but also to make it more feasible in terms of the connections, keeping the kind of elegance of the, of the proposal, but making it, uh, let's say, also kind of economic and, and easy to assemble. So, um, for example, in, we, we are now with, with Thomas, we, we were, and with John, we were kind of finding the right way to generate these connections in, in a kind of play-to-play, -play, easy way to manufacture and assemble. Uh, but we want the steel structure to be the main protagonist while preserving the aesthetic qualities and philosophy of the original content, concept. So the result is an architecture that dialogues with the natural context and with our community and, and explore contemporary and holistic notions of building and sustainable urban infrastructures. So together with my brilliant team and excellent collaborators, we look forward to materializing the project that strives to achieve a balance between economy and beauty, ecology and innovation. Thank you. And here a list of the team with Elliot, my research assistant, that helped me with, with the images and the development of the project, with John Hand, Arup Houston, and, and Stephen Donnelly, but and also, of course, Thomas and Eric from Thompson Metal Fab that collaborated in this project and I that I really enjoyed. Thank you. Hey, thank you. All right. So um are there is there maybe one question per juror um or one? I just have a quick question. In your initial write-up for the project, you mentioned that it that this um, that this structure could collect water and that it could potentially use that water to um, feed plants or uh, you know have a storage basin. And I was just curious if that was part of the final design or if you have plans for that and how would that uh, manifest itself? Yes. Of course, it's part is very important part of the project. But of course, we we have a very limited time to present. But if you have seen, there is an elevated floor on top of pedestals. The idea is that the ceramic columns that now are kind of uh, encapsulated by the steel structure, they would collect this water and divert it into uh, water tanks that are equally distributed uh, below the the elevated floor. And the the ceramic floor is also meant to activate the uh, thermally like a, an active surface so water and hydronic systems are very efficient uh, systems to distribute uh, homogeneously uh, heating and cooling uh, and also well we are now studying where would be the right place for these water tanks we are thinking something that is more distributed in a surface rather than the typical water tank that is more stored in a kind of a volume like the traditional water tanks in new york uh, rather, we are looking for something that is more equally distributed and generates other kinds of opportunities also in terms of architecture to maybe show the water and experience also as, an, as a pedagogical and educative process that you can see the water hitting the membrane, channeling through the column, and, and then distributing almost like, like, a, like an organic form towards the to irrigate plants and then produce this kind of circular logic. Thank you. You're okay, welcome. other quick quick comments, Reed? Did you... Well, Gina, I know you're rushing. So um, I, I don't actually have any questions, so I can save my comments. Uh, the one comment I'll say, it's a beautiful project in every way. Uh, but mm -hmm. I'll save a more detailed description for when we get to the comment section, because mine was the same question that was just asked. Thank you. <laughs> you and I are thinking a lot alike today. We sure are. <laughs> Paul? Um, you just take very briefly how much steel is being used. I mean, you're using ceramics, you're using the textile. Just take just very, very briefly. Wh where is pinpoint where the steel is being used? I mean, all the canopy structure was originally uh, 
space trash uh, structure. So it was all uh, metal tubes. But now with the collaboration with with uh, Thom Thom Thomson Metal Fab, we have extended. So now the column actually is also uh, the same metal tubes that reach the ground and they become more protagonist. So all the structure basically is the steel, but we wanted to preserve the qualities of all that. And I think something that really makes steel so valuable is the, the, the capacity that it has to embrace and integrate other materials. So we feel that that is more successful when these materials are hybrid. So, so the combination with ceramics and with textiles makes the, but it's always uh, still the material that kind of brings together all of them. So for example, the original pieces now are inside the structural columns uh, and we didn't make a, a specific calculation of the amount of, of steel, but let's say is the, the main material that we have. And what we are trying is to optimize the amount of material and also generate very efficient connections and very elegant connections. And this is where we are putting the most of, of the effort together with Thomas and John. Great, great. thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, um, we will move on to Chen. If you wanna start to um, share your screen and um, I'll do a quick introduction of you. So we have Uzu Minoko's Chen Sha designing um, a community art center concept. And he partnered with um, Garby Ironworks, um, the president of customer relations, John Pisha. So Chen, when you are ready, please take it away. Okay, uh, thank you. And good afternoon. Uh, for this final design, my steel fabricator supervisor is John. He's the president of Gabby Aaron Works. Uh, this project is a public building uh, proposal located in Jimmy Plan in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, the client uh, is a local artist organization. They are looking for a public building design for local art activities. Uh, they want a building uh, felt more connected and open to its neighborhood. This is a concept a physics model. And uh, my basic design idea is to elevate some glass boxes in the air by a supporting structure with a sense of uh, lightness and translucency. Uh, this is a concept uh, image showing my design idea of the relationship between interior spaces and exterior skin. Uh, to realize uh, this idea, I think steel is the best choice of the construction material. A regular, a regular cubic steel grid system can not only be the structure holding the spaces in the air, but also create the sense of lightness um, and translucency itself in building and urban scale. Uh, during the last couple of weeks, with the advice and help from my supervisor, Jian, I have revised the steel grid system. The whole system structure consists of multiple module steel cubes. The dimension of each cube is two feet in all three directions. The key structure of this system is the crossing joist where steel tubes in all three directions meet. So this is the key module uh, steel joist I created with John's advice and help. In the center, there's a steel core, and then there are four identical horizontal steel tubes and two identical vertical steel, uh, steel tubes. Now I will show the assembling process of this key um, steel joist. Based on the concept and the steel uh, structure design mentioned above, this is the final design of the community art center, a translucent building opens to its neighborhood. Uh, this is the site plan. The building uh, creates and encourages more shortcuts when people walking around. Uh, this is the ground floor plan, office and storage spaces uh, on this uh, floor. Uh, 
on the ground floor is for public open space, two staircase by the sides, elevator core in the center. And on the second floor, there are two glass boxes as interior spaces. Uh, similarly happens on the third floor. Uh, two glass uh, boxes are as interior spaces and an open space. On the top floor, uh, the top terrace along the west side, it's an enclosed space connected with the space below. Mm, this is the south elevation in day and night uh, view uh, time. Uh, from the south facade, people outside can sense the interior space. Mm, this is the north elevation views. Uh, the same uh, from the north facade, people outside can sense the interior uh, space inside. I revised and lift up all the glass boxes to open the ground floor to the neighborhood. The blue area are the three enclosed entries on the ground floor to the glass boxes upper levels. Uh, for the rest space on the ground floor, the steel grate uh, system doesn't enclose the space. It defines the space. So people can walk through, stop by, and get together on the ground floor. Uh, the space is part of the building and also a part of um, public open space of the neighborhood. Uh, these are west and east elevation views. Uh, from west and east facades, people outside can sense all the interior spaces. Uh, since uh, the center core blocks the center light, or uh, the sunlight, sorry, uh, space one and three are covered uh, with shade most of the daytime. Uh, so this is a perspective, perspective view in space one. People inside can sense the surroundings outside. Mm. Another view in the same space from the opposite. Uh, for sure, there will be direct sunlight in a day. Now I will show the sunlight shadow variation in a space from morning to afternoon. So this is uh, 6.30 a.m., 8.50 a.m., noontime, uh, 3.10 p.m., and 5 p.m. So the direct sunlight in space one and three uh, only happens in early morning and late afternoon. If the material, art material is very sensitive to the sunlight uh, or if uh, there is some invent need, uh, all time shade environment, my solution is to install shade curtains to block the direct sunlight. Uh, space two and four always get sunlight all day long. Sometimes maybe it's a good thing because the shadows of the steel grate system may create a more artistic environment in the space. Here's a long section mm, cut from here. If we zoom in this moment, we have this view in the space three. People in the open space and on the terrace can walk around for the neighborhood views and people inside the glass box can sense the surroundings outside. Here's the shop section uh, cut through from here. If we zoom in this moment, we have a view in the same uh, space. People on the terrace can attend what's happening in the space below. As the important part of the building structure, the steel grate uh, system combines uh, trusses, posts, beams, the vertical and horizontal structure cores all together for the structural stability. Uh, for the architecture design, with a sense of lightness and translucency in building scale, the steel grate system connects the interior spaces with its neighborhood. And that's all. That's my design. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chen. Are there any quick questions from the jurors or comments? Uh, 
It's a very beautiful project, um, Chen. Thank you. Just wanted to say that from the front, the kind of uh, continuous nature of the way the steel works uh, makes it um, visually very beautiful. One simple question, your bolted connect, or sorry, your slide together connection, are you anticipating that those are bolted as well? Uh, yes, uh, both, I think. Okay. Yeah, I'll just add, I also appreciate the the um, the design of the veil system. It seems to really be conducive to your idea of letting the community in and giving some visibility to the interior um, and then also back to the exterior. I think what I would like to see on that night shot is, you know, a view of some of the art pieces, because if you could see in, um, it would just be really fascinating to see all the, the pops of color um, coming from that and really kind of jazz up that, that sexy night shot. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, did you have a quick comment? Oh, you're muted. I'm good. Okay. All right. Well, those were three really great presentations. Thank you so much. Um, right now, uh, Zach is going to send the jurors and me into a separate room, and um, Christina will be your host, and uh, we'll see you in a few minutes. Thank you. The jurors will get a little invite on their screen that you'll All right, well, while we're waiting, um, I was curious to know from our fabricators, if you're able to, to speak for a couple minutes each, um, can you tell us about your experience um, collaborating with these architects or if you wanted to comment on some of the presentations that you saw today? Um, Tony, I don't know if you're still on and available to talk about your experience. Yeah, I'm still here. Uh, yeah, uh, working with uh, with Emily was uh, kind of a stretch for me because, you know, being an engineer, I like straight lines and everything was, you know, cattywampus. So I thought it was, um, you know, at first glance, I, I was confused by what I was looking at. And, you know, once she kind of explained the uh, the whole spin valence concept uh, to uh, to me, I, I thought it was pretty innovative and and and, and seems like it could be um, a really interesting uh, structural piece, but also very artistic at the same time. So, um, you know, when, when we met, we, we discussed, uh, constructability first and foremost, you know, we talked about tolerances and, you know, lateral stability and, you know, the use of weathering steel cause coating, you know, getting, getting some kind of high performance coating and all those little cracks and crevices just seemed like that would never work, uh, very well. And you're going to end up rusting everywhere anyway. Um, you know, we talked about the size of the units given, you know, typical plate material sizes and you know, machine capacities. Um, you know, she was able to come to St. Louis and meet with me. And I think that was that was pretty helpful. I don't know if anybody else had that uh, experience, but I, I, I don't I prefer meeting in person. So that that worked out really well for me. And uh, yeah. And, and you know, I, I talked to her and we um, we intend to continue to support um, her and Isabel's uh design uh development as this um as this design becomes a real project so we intend to stay uh in the loop and help them with budgeting and more constructability as the as the design develops so it's a good experience thanks all right that's great to hear uh, thank you I so much by the way i'll say that <laughs> yeah no, no problem it was, it was incredible to get to also tour their facilities so that was really amazing as well yeah, and I'm, I'm not sure if any of our Forge Prize um, participants have ever actually met in person and, and toured the shop of our fabricator mentors. So that's that's pretty amazing. Um, Tony, you mentioned that you know this is obviously not, not um, a structurally driven project. You know, we have architects here that are really you know pushing it with their designs, um, and this is a, this is a great example of that. 
um, I don't think any of the three projects that we saw today were like really straightforward. Everyone's really, you know, pushing it in terms of design, which is exciting. Um, if anyone from Thompson Metal Fab wants to uh, talk about their experience, Michael or Thomas. Yeah, I, I guess I can I can certainly comment to that. Uh, I mean, it was a it was a very good experience, right? It it kind of reminds me of uh, you know of the design build projects that, uh, that that we often do in you know close collaboration with uh, you know the engineering outfits, right? It's just that in this case, it was kind of spiced up by uh, having the the architect uh, as a part of the as a part of the collaboration process, right? So, um, you know, that way you basically get to um, be a part of the, the design and the architecture as it develops, right? So you have the chance to um, um, influence the, the, the main aspects that, uh, you know, if done right, then later on in the, in the production process, uh, make those projects a success, right? So uh, with, uh, Juan and John, I mean, we basically fair, uh, very early arrived at the subject of the of the modularity and the repeatability aspects for you know for the production uh, that, that that ultimately uh, kind of determined the, the, the fabrication efficiencies, right? Um, and then the the modularity of the system uh, allows for scaling it, it, it allows for the efficiencies through the fabrication through um you know through th through the transportation and um through the assembly through the erection in the field um i think one of the you know uh, one like one example would be like a discussion about how you put these things together in the field right whether whether you go for field building or, or just bolting um i think we all pretty quickly settled at the no field welding option. Uh, it's kind of like if it's done right and then build it in the shop and then in the field, uh, don't, don't don't strike an arc in the field, right? Um, you know, the other aspect that that is really good or enjoyable about these projects is, is that it kind of seems a common theme across the board for all three of these presentations is, is how the architects are combining the, the various mat materials. It's not steel only, right? It's steel for the structural aspects, but then there's the other materials that are involved in in different ways. While you basically make a, a really good use of of the pros that the different materials offer. So that was that was really uh, really unique and, and in, enjoyable aspect of of this project. So um, you know, on our side, certainly a great experience. Uh, really good collaboration with uh, Juan and John, and uh, hope we can take it to an end. All right, well, that's good to hear. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, Thanks so glad to have you participating. Um, Thank and you, then, uh, John, if you wanted to say a few words about your experience and what you saw here today of the design. Yeah, just wanted to say I thought that um, all all three of them were were wonderful uh, ideas and beautiful designs. Um, I had a lot of fun with reviewing Chen's uh, design because uh, it was a building and that's what we do. Uh, so that was nice for us. Um, I thought his uh, use of the material in the neighborhood was <clears throat> remarkable so that uh, it could be um, viewed by everybody and appreciated by everybody and also be useful for uh, the community. So um, I just thought it was a, a, a wonderful design and uh, constructability wise, <clears throat> um, it would be something that uh, could be modular and built in a shop and uh, delivered at the job site um, and uh, erected in not the easiest way, but uh, pretty close. Um, it was uh, quite of an experience and I enjoyed it quite a bit. So thank you. All right, thanks, John. Um, I think that seemed to be a theme in all three was a modularity um, that was explored, uh, which is interesting. Um, 
if anyone wanted to talk about that, did you uh, have that in your head in the very beginning, or is that just something that it seems to be something that architects really are interested in modularity? Is that a theme in all of your work? Oh, certainly. I mean, I I think having done a lot of prototyping in the past with with digital cutting and in my my shop we have a capacity of like a four by eight sheet of material and so modularity to build anything bigger than that we have to like get modular so absolutely always kind of thinking about how the parts come together yeah i think there is a question that relates to economy of means that is then the other aspect that is differentiation right because you have modularity but you don't want a boring repetition of a module or let's say mm -hmm. there are that we can propose now in contemporary scenario with the available technology so i think it's a question of how balancing the kind of economy of means by using a modular system and at the same time a more responsive and adaptable system to that can kind of incorporate different questions environmental or or uh, aesthetics or, or, or spatial. All right, that looks like our jury is wrapping up. They're almost done. Check on them for a second. In another minute. Um, it was interesting contacting some of our member fabricators to see if they'd be interested in this opportunity because it is so different than you know what what we typically do, um, you know at AISC and also as structural steel fabricators. And I noticed um, Thompson Metal Fab in particular um, replied with like four people copied on it, like you can use all of us, like we're all really interested. <laughs> Um, and I really appreciate that. Um, I don't know if all all of you, your whole team, uh, participated, or if Tomas, you were the the lead on that. Um, we kind of took the lead on it on on the project management side of things because that's who we normally have, uh, you know, work with. Uh, this kind of the connecting bridge between the between the designers and and the detailers and the shop. So we kind of approached it in a similar manner how we would the other projects that we do. And any of our fabricators, um, if you were to talk to another fabricator about this experience, um, what would you say to them? What would you warn them about? What would you like? Would you recommend this to them? I think it's great to be involved. In, um, my whole uh, office and shop. Uh, my brother runs the shop for us and uh, he got excited about it. And the guys that uh, uh, program all our machines actually did a, a paper uh, cardboard model of Chen's design, uh, part of it. And uh, without me even talking to him about it, it was just me sharing the, the uh, uh, pictures of Chen's design. So uh, everybody got uh, real interested in it. And it was neat for us because Again, we usually just deal with engineers and uh, don't get to talk to dark. That's very often. Uh, so it was a it was a, a welcome change. I don't know how lucky you are, John. <laughs> All right. Well, the jury are we ready? Yeah. Gene, what's going on? Yeah. So um, Reed is going to take over the announcement of the winner. Uh, well, thank you, Gene. First of all, I want to thank um, all the folks like John uh, and and the fabricating experts who made this possible for the competitors. It makes such a huge difference. And, and I know all of you run businesses. And so this is not something that is uh, going to go on the profit side of the ledger uh, in a traditional sense. But listening to John just then, I, it sounds like it may go on the profit side of the ledger in another way. 
um, that has a longer, uh, longer lasting effect. And so thank you to all of you for making this possible to the same, in the same way, of course, thanks to AISC um, for underwriting this um, and uh, doing something that's really meaningful for both the fields of architecture and steel fabrication um, for pushing, helping us push boundaries in what we do um, in these fields and in encouraging meaningful collaboration, which you've accomplished. Uh, having said all of that, um, we're gonna run out of time in a minute. So I'm gonna jump in and say, um, we loved all three projects, each for different reasons. Um, if, and Gene's been taking great notes and we'll be able to articulate those reasons to each of the competitors. All of you deserve congratulations. I know that sounds like just kind of standard Dean talk, but it, in fact, it's really true. Um, and the, I think all of the jurors would um, agree, uh, would confirm with me that we spoke about each of the projects in a very different way and articulated the things about those projects that we thought were strong um, and got closest to the spirit of the competition. But uh, having to being forced by Gene cruelly to have to choose only one at the end of the day, um, uh, we decided that um, Arkansas is going to be a big winner in the long term um, because the shade structure uh, we thought was remarkably innovative in its structure, in, in the way that it took steel and used it um, in such an interesting fashion both the unfolding and the stacking and how it seems to be um, something that can possibly have other shapes or add things to it. Don't bring anything that's not steel into it. Um, and uh, uh, that um, we thought that it, um, it had great promise for steel as a, mil as a building material. Um, uh, but to both Juan and Chen, uh, your projects are terrific. Um, and, uh, and, and, and have Juan, uh, Chan yours has great promise. Juan yours is super sophisticated. Um, and, uh, we all want to be underneath it when it rains. Um, so, um, we thank you for what you've done and, and we think everybody did excellent work. Paul, Samantha, did I do okay? Did I leave anything out? Did a great job and everybody, everybody did a wonderful job. These projects were absolutely beautiful. So great job participating. Paul, you and want to jump in with anything? <laughs> yeah, um, I think at Architect, uh, we'll be writing about this. So uh, we'll be able to uh, get more information from Jean and, uh, and we'll definitely be showcasing uh, all the finalists and the winner too. Well, that is great news for everybody. So thank you for that. Um, thank you really to all the finalists and entrants, the jurors, the mentor fabricators for all of your work. We know it's a lot of work and a lot of time um, for, for the Forge Prize competition. We really just love to see innovative ideas, see where it's headed regarding structural steel and literally to forge the connections between um, architects and fabricators. It's a great thing for architects to really connect with those who are, are have expertise in making um, the, the steel material work. So thank you so much. All right, but that ends our program. Everybody, yes, give yourselves a hand. <laughs>